Hi there everyone, Ken here, your Thrifty Apprentice. Happy Wednesday everyone, and welcome back to another Thrifty Review. Today we've got ourselves a review and a demo, so we're going to jump directly into the demo, which I'm going to show you guys how to do a really quick illustration, and then we'll go right into the review of the pencils. Okay friends, we're going to jump into a little demo here, just so you guys can get a final glimpse at the way the pencils perform um, in use before we jump into my somewhat long-winded review. It won't be that bad, I promise. Um, so I just took my um, mechanical pencil here and I sketched out a little three element scene, just something that I was kind of working on just to give me a little bit more practice with this particular type of drawing style um, for illustration work for a book that I would like to do. Um, through a plant on top of a standing column pot, a small planted pot, and then a bush in the back. Just going to throw in some shadow up under those three elements. And I took uh, my fine line markers, I inked that in, and now I'm actually going in with the watercolor pencils in order to, to apply color. Um, now I'm using brown on the pots and all of the browns have sort of a reddish tone to them in the set. So I just had to go with a red clay looking pot. But it was enough diversity in the colors for me to get the range that I needed in order to make the object look like it was round and to add the extra detail to the pot that I wanted to. Now I'm going to be tackling the greenery with three different shades of green. Now this set has a lot of greens in it, um, which is a really good thing, especially for somebody like me that likes to do landscapes. Um, but the lack of browns other than a few red browns would sort of be a hindrance in that area and we'll talk more about that when we actually jump into the review so here you're just going to see me dabble back and forth with three colors of green until i'm able to get the shading that i want and if you notice with the brush that i'm using and by the way that's a number two round golden tackle and a synthetic synthetic brush because I do suggest that synthetic brushes are the best to use when you're using watercolor pencils. You'll notice that I'm actually tapping the pigment in order to leave texture. That's gonna help give a little bit more realism to the actual bushes and the little flowers that are drawn in this composition. And there you also see that I'm using the little makeshift palette you see me using all the time. Watercolor pencils are really, really versatile, guys. There are so many different ways to use them. And you can do so many illustrations, still lives, or even realistic work with them. They work really well in conjunction with regular watercolor paints, watercolor crayons. They go well um, with colored pencils. So just overall, all around, something pretty decent now what you see there is i was using the black pencil in order to add shadow to the gray tones that i used to do the mass column planner there and then i decided you know what let's go with a different color for the bush in front and i decided to go with blue yeah it's a little different and i do tend to see these type of colors used in foliage bushes and trees especially in a lot of like uh manga work which is something i'm leaning more towards trying to learn to illustrate and draw and that's kind of what this practice was all about other than just giving you guys a chance to see um, how the pencils perform for one last time here i'm just basing in the shadow used a couple of grays and a black in order to get the shading that I needed. And then I'm jumping in with the white gel pens, which I need to get me some more of them because none of these seem to work worth anything. If anybody has a suggestion for a really good white gel pen, jump in the comment section and let me know. All right, guys, let's move on to the review. So here we have the Xenocolor Expert Series 72 count of watercolor pencils. If you guys remember, we've already done an unboxing, a swatching, and preliminary demo for these pencils. I will be sure to put a card in the video as well as a link in the video description in case you want to go check that out. Let's jump directly into this. So the pencils come in an aluminum tin, which is, excuse me, pretty nicely decorated. Um, but the tin itself is made of really thin aluminum. And just from back, one of the issues that I had was that the tin was sort of weak and wobbly. As a matter of fact, 
if you go ahead and unlatch it, you can kind of feel it move around, which we'll look at more in just a moment. So that was the first thing that I noticed about them, just taking them out of the box. The lid itself latches pretty tightly. Um, I did have a bit of an issue at first, but I was able to remedy that by just pulling on the edge of the tin just a little bit to make sure that it clicks in the little divots. So there's no issue with that. It will stay closed. It will definitely keep the pencils on the inside. There wasn't much information on the tin. There's a beautiful picture of what I came to be known thanks to a wonderful viewer of mine as a East African crown crane, African crown crane, I'm sorry, um, which is a really beautiful picture, which actually is kind of funny. And I'm gonna get to that in just a moment. <clears throat> Other than that, Nothing else on the front of the tin, the back of the tin, flipping it over, let you know that it was 72 rich and vibrant colors. It gives a couple of social media links that you can contact them at, uh, contact email, the website. It lets you know that it is for ages 14 years or older, conforms to the ASTMD 4236 regulation. <clears throat> and then it gives you um, the distributor or who makes it, and then it gives you the information for a representative for that company in other major countries. So it is made by BMS International and it has representatives in uh, Europe, the UK, and as well as the US. Now, <clears throat> BMS International is headquartered in Grand Bay, Mauritius, which I wasn't sure where that was and I had to go do some research. I also paid attention to the fact that the 10 nor the information included gave any reference to where the pencils are actually made. You know how you'll normally see the company based in one country and maybe the pencils are white labeled in China or Vietnam or um, Korea or something of that nature <clears throat> uh, as far as the Asian white label to go. Uh, I also went and pulled out other watercolor pencil sets that I have. And as you guys know, I have a lot of them in order to see if I could compare the pencils to something else that I already had so that I could possibly see who may be producing these pencils. The case is normally with budget companies, they white label their products and they don't produce them themselves. I found it really funny that I found no form of information indicating the manufacturer of these pencils. I even went to the website and nowhere on the website was I able to find it say where the pencils are actually made. With all of that in mind, um, I looked up Mauritius. Mauritius happens to be a African island country uh, <clears throat> off the east coast of Africa, off of the far east coast of the country of Madagascar. So with all of that information, I came to the deductive conclusion that BMS International <clears throat> possibly produces their very own products. Now they started <clears throat> Xena Color and it was a it is a budget art company um, that produces pencils, paints, palettes, and papers. Um, the range of products that they produce that I use um, on this channel, all oils, acrylics, gouache, watercolor, color pencils, watercolor pencils, and oil pastels. Um, so it's an all around, all over art company. And I just thought that that was really, 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 really neat. So I am going to go with the assumption <clears throat> that these pencils are produced in East Africa by BMS International and that they do not white label. Now, if there's anybody out there who knows anything different than this, because this is my best educated guess that I'm making, just based on my experience, um, please jump in the comment section and let me know because I never want to give out any wrong information. And I'm always open to a correction <clears throat> um, to what I say, as long as it's factual and you know it can be proven. Um, Opinion-based, opinion-based, opinion-based is one thing. But if I should say something and you know for a fact that it needs to be corrected, please, I will never, ever, I want the audience to know. <clears throat> so let's just jump into the pencils. When you pop open the tin here, the very first thing you're gonna get on the inside of the tin is a color swatch. Now, initially when I um, did the unboxing video, I had qualms with the fact that the colors were swatched here with no number. And on the pencil itself, there's a number, but no name. 
However, the pencils are numbered in order one through 72. So as long as you put them in order in the tin, it will correlate with the color swatching that's in the top of the tin. I just wanted to offer that information. If you need another point of reference, you can always go to your do-it-yourself color chart that was provided. It's gonna contain both the number as well as the name for each pencil. This paper, um, that they provide to swatch on seems to be somewhere around a 90 pound mixed media paper if I just had to guess so it did well for me swatching the mass tones of these pencils considering I typically use watercolor pencils and or color pencils in mixed media work or on mixed media paper so that all seem to be pretty cool now the pencils come in these three filmy trays which i don't hold against them even some of the legacy companies when they produce their pencils put them in flimsy trays what i do fault them for however is the fact that again the tin itself is so flimsy although you could remove the pencils me personally if i was keeping these pencils i would remove them from the tin and put them into like a, a linen carrier or cloth carrier or vinyl carrier something that would protect the pencils better not unless you're just going to be using a tin for storage and or props um, for pictures. So that's definitely something to be considered. Uh, let me stick this back in. I got a dog barking outside, so you guys are going to have to look over that. Let's take a look at the actual barrel of the pencil itself and try not to drop any of them here. So the barrel of the pencil itself is a full color swatch, which is pretty indicative of the color of the lid. I did find that these were closer with the swatching on the barrel than most watercolor pencils that I've run across. The information on the barrel is gonna give you the company name, that it's a watercolor pencil with the brush logo to let you know it is water soluble and the number for the pencil. Other than that, there is no information listed. Now you don't typically, <clears throat> expect pigment number, but colored pencils and watercolor pencils, um, you are looking for the light fast rating. And I am no longer giving companies passes on, you know, putting a light fast rating on their product. I think it should be pretty standard considering the fact that everybody and their parents are into light fast information, especially if they're professional artists are seeking to be one. However, I believe that these pencils actually target a market that might not necessarily care that much about light fastness. And that's the coloring book market, the adult coloring book scene. Now, <clears throat> no disrespect to that scene at all, but I do know that most coloring book artists color in a coloring book and the work is protected between the pages when the book is closed. Therefore, light fast information would not be something that was relatively important to them. It's not like the artwork is going to be hung in direct light um, or in a museum or anything of that nature. And I would assume it wouldn't be used in a commission. And if they are used in commission, I would hope that you would disclose that to your client before you allow them to purchase it. And if they're okay with it, then I say, hey, go for it. So no light fast information. The pencils are domed on, oh, I'm sorry, are not domed on the end, which I was really excited to see um, because it helps you see better whether or not the lid is centered in the pencil. I did go through all 72 pencils and I did not find any of the lids being off kilter, off center. I also did a roll test of all the pencils in their trays because they are round. I didn't find any discrepancies with any of the pencils being like malformed or misshaped or anything of that nature. With that said, they are a round pencil, so they are prone to roll away from you when used, just um, so you'll keep that in mind. Now, the pencil lid itself was pretty sturdy. They're actually, you know, pretty brittle lids, if the truth be told. Now, although they're centered, and because they're centered, I didn't experience any problem with sharpening them. And when they sharpen, they will sharp to a really, really fine point. The issue is that the lid is so brittle that that fine point breaks quickly. They break really easily under a lot of pressure. And that's unfortunate simply because the pencils are pigmented and they will put off a pretty decent amount of pigment for a budget gray watercolor pencil. Of course, you can get more pigment by pressing harder, but with the brittleness of the lid, pressing harder simple means that you're breaking the lid and now you're having to do more sharpening. The issue with that is that you use product up pretty fast. Now that can be offset with the price um, and we'll get to that, <clears throat> excuse me, in just a few minutes. 
Now the color payoff is really, really cool. They're not scratchy. They did do a lot of covering. Now the product itself does wear down pretty fast. I have to say that I've only done maybe two, three, four compositions at the most in the pencils that are colors that I tend to use and grab the uh, most have worn down a little bit, especially in the blue section here. Pretty diverse range of colors, but I will say that I felt like some of the colors were a little bit samey. So you get 72 pencils, and in that 72 range, when you start to get two or three pencils here and there that look the same, it reduces the number of pencils that you're actually getting, especially when you don't have 72 different versatile, useful colors. Let's move on and take a look at the swatching sheet. I'm gonna put these back together, being as careful as I can not to drop anything. Now there is a brush included in the set. It's just an old throwaway knockabout brush. Um, those brushes that you get in the really cheap kids art set. It's nothing that I even attempted to use because I didn't want to be frustrated and I would suggest the same for you. Let's look at the swatching so we can talk about the actual product. So I swatched the pencils out on their paper and then I swatched the pencils out on the normal uh, mixed media paper that I use. As I said earlier, <clears throat> large, large range of colors. They performed pretty well on mixed media paper both for the watered swatch as well as the mass tone swatch. What I did notice right away is that there was an issue with the dissolvability of the pencils. The mid tones and the dark tones seem to dissolve much, much better in water than any of the lighter tones. The lighter tones definitely left um, ghosting on the mass tone. And I did find this to be the same on, one, on um, regular watercolor paper as well as Bristol board. So there wasn't just an issue that was indicative to the mixed media paper. I did think that there was something to take note of. I also found the set to be a little lacking in earth tones, especially in browns. There are, I mean, there are a few browns in the set. They all seem to have more of a reddish undertone than anything neutral leaning. Um, which may cause an issue with using the browns as a mix if you're trying to mix the colors. Because as you know, you do not have to use the pencil directly as a pencil per se. You can use it directly to paper. You can paint directly from the lid with a brush, or you can actually make a palette as I do and scribble the pencil lid out in the palette and make a little paint palette from it. So this is something I always suggest. Just grab you one of these little throwaway palettes, a piece of sandpaper, abrase the surface so that you have scratches in it and those scratches will grab the lid of the watercolor pencil. So I was able to use it versatilely, but <clears throat> it all kept stemming back to the fact, excuse me, that the brittleness of the pencil lid stood in the way with some of the techniques that I was trying to do. Not necessarily with the palette making, I mean, because whether the lid broke or not didn't matter because I was going to be adding water to it. Um, so that browns, yes, browns, browns, just it definitely could use a different selection of browns. Now, I initially said that, you know, I was going to give that a pass because I felt like it was targeting color book artists, um, color illustrators. But then I thought to myself that there are many color book artists who do landscapes as well as animals. And both of those subjects would require, you know, a pretty nice brown here or there in order to pull off. So not to rain, you know, rain in and concentrate on that particular point too much, but I did think there was something to be noted. There's a pretty, pretty decent range of blues, greens, didn't have any problem with those cooler tones. As far as the warmer tones are concerned, you get a large variety of them. A lot of lights, as far as the pinks and the yellows goes, large section of reds here, goldens and yellows and oranges. And of course we know that browns are really just desaturated oranges, but when it comes to a set that I feel like is targeting color book artists or maybe beginner watercolor pencil users, they may not have discovered the whole mixability of watercolor pencils yet. And when you're gonna give a person 72 pencils, I think you should give them a range that'll be useful across all subjects that they were trying to possibly use the pencils for. 
Pencils blended pretty well. They live pretty well. I did a little testing here. <clears throat> So I wrote down two, or I'm sorry, scribbled out two of the colors. And I don't know if you guys can see that, but you see where I have the circle here? This is where I did a smudge test and tried to smudge the pencils across paper. Now this is watercolor paper. It's 140 pound cold press acid-free cellulose paper. So it is made of wood pulp. Um, and you did get a little ghosting on that smudging. So they will smudge just a little bit, but not enough to cause concern, which lets me know that they could both be used, <clears throat> excuse me, they could be used both as a watercolor pencil and possibly a color pencil to do your detailing on um, for the second or third layer if you chose to. As you can see, they erased moderately well. It wasn't anything to write home about, but I have seen pencils that erase much, much worse. Uh, I did a little itty bitty <clears throat> illustration here where I was just testing the pencils uh, to see if they were going to blend well together and I wanted to see whether or not I had enough pencils to create a range of colors um, and for the most part it, it wasn't too bad. I did a little splattering here where I was able to take the brush and pull color directly from the lid of the pencil and do splattering and that didn't give me any issues and of course we did this little mini composition here on camera um, during this video, just so I could show you guys how the pencils could be used in order to pull off pretty much any type of illustration, um, use them in your coloring book, or even if you were just a regular artist trying to figure out how to incorporate them into your regular artwork. For all of those purposes, the pencils will work. The major issue that I found is that the lid just break too, too often. It reminded me so much of Prismacolor that, um, yeah, it was a little crazy. Let's take a look at some of the artwork that I did so we can go ahead and wrap this on up. So, of course, in the unboxing video, we did this particular landscape that was inside of a wine goblet. I had a lot of fun with this. The blues worked and blended really well. Although I do say that there's not a huge range of browns, there's enough in there for you to achieve moderate landscapes without it being a real issue. You know, rocks, hills, things of that nature. In here, the pencils did mix really well with the gouache. They, they worked well at mixed media. Most products will work well with mixed media. And I do believe I was able to pull it off the shiny glass effect pretty well. And this is the first time I'd ever tried this effect with watercolor pencils. I normally do it with paints. And I was relatively pleased with the way the pencils performed there. Next we did, or what went up was, let's see, this mountain scene, which was pretty straightforward. I was basically using the pencils to see if I could achieve a night sky with stars and whether or not I can use them to really get some deep saturated colors in order to do the shaded side or add shadow, which again, didn't have any issues. They worked pretty well there. The pencils cover really well. They don't leave like a chalky feeling that a rub off or anything of that nature. And again, they worked well with the gouache there. More recently, I did, I've been working way ahead of time on Inktober because a lot of my Inktober drawings are going to be um, things that come out on the channel. Um, now, this is not going to be the this is not going to be uh, the illustration that comes out for this day. But I think it's day eleven, and I was painting ahead. And day 11's prompt was Winder, you know, kind of to wander around aimlessly with no plan, no direction. And that tends to be what I do when I go to the lake or to the pond or open fields of the water. I'll just walk around and I'll drink, Lord, drink, think. I'll walk around and I will think um, ideas, ponder, take pictures, just and end up spending a lot of time doing it, not even realizing it. So that's kind of what I sketched out here, places where I like to walk it. Now, this was more on the illustrative side, uh, leaning more towards the type of work that I want to do for the book, uh, the little fantasy book I'm always talking about versus leaning towards realism. But either way, they worked well. They blended okay. This mixed media paper, this is the same paper that I did the swatching on. So 
I feel that the pencils work a lot better on watercolor paper, I'll be honest, which makes me curious as to how they're going to work on um, in a coloring book. And I actually did not test them in a coloring book, but I do not believe that most coloring book paper is as robust as like 140 pound watercolor paper. I think it's more along the lines of maybe mixed media paper or the type of paper that came in the swatching. So for those purposes, I think they'll, they'll work okay. They really will, no qualms. Now the pencils came out to be, or currently should I say, are currently listed for $14.99. And then, of course, you guys saw the illustration there. The pencils are currently listed for $14.99 for 72 pencils. Now, when you think about that price and everything that I've said about the pencils, it sort of makes you feel a little bit better. Um, they are definitely more budget-friendly than a lot of products out there on the market right now, um, considering the fact that you get such a large quantity. If I had anything to say or any suggestions to make the BMS International about the pencils, one would be include the color name on the barrel. Two would be, I don't think it's too far of a stretch to have to ask that you include the light fast information on them. Just for those artists who care. I know some don't, but there are some who do and that these things are important to. And I would also say to think about reformulating the lid of the pencil to make it a little bit more stable and a little bit more sturdy. If they're producing their own pencils, if they're not producing their own pencils, then you know the product is what it is and this is what it's gonna be and what you're gonna get. Um, do I recommend the pencils? I guess it depends on who, what you're, who you're getting the pencils for. Someone just getting into watercolor pencils that you know, don't have a lot of experience, not expecting a whole lot, just want to play around with them to see if they will work for them. Definitely. Um, someone that's maybe into card making or um, journaling that's just using the pencils to add a little bit of color here and there, I can see that happening. However, if you are serious about watercolor pencil work, if you're serious about the heavy use of watercolor pencils in your regular artwork and your mixed media work, if you are a serious diehard coloring book fan, I believe that these pencils may cause a bit of frustration due to the brittleness of the lead. So for me, that is the biggest caveat, not even the fact that they, um, you know, don't have light fast information. Like I can look past that because a lot of products I use do not provide that information. What I can't seem to get over is how much they break. Now, of course, if you're okay with that, then I say go for it because Prismacolor break and I love Prismacolors. I use them all the time, um, but it is a professional legacy company and it's something that's kind of ingrained in my blood. So maybe that could be the reason that I give them a pass. Um, however, when it comes to new budget companies that are targeting possibly beginners and new users, I think it's important that we know these type of things in order to make an informed decision. So there you have it. They would not be the first set that I recommend run out and buy. However, for the price of $14.99 for 72 pencils, I do believe that they perform well enough if you just wanted to give them a whirl. So there you have it, guys. Hopefully you heard, saw, found something helpful, informative in this video, or you just enjoyed hanging out for another thrifty review. If you did, don't forget to give the video a thumbs up. Go ahead and subscribe if you're new to the channel. If you're returning and you haven't subscribed, please hit that subscription button and then that notification bell so you guys will know when the new content is coming out. You can check the video description for all of the relevant links. You're gonna get the Facebook group where we welcome all artists and crafters. You'll get the most recommended product list, which is gonna give you great quality products at a low price. And you'll also get the link for both the Etsy shop as well as Patreon, where you can either join Patreon or purchase from the Etsy shop if you decide you would like to support the channel so that I can continue to bring you guys wonderful um, products that may be exciting and useful in your art journey. Thank you guys so much for joining me. I'll see you back here on Friday. And remember, as I tell you at the end of every single video, just keep painting and crafting.